All right, we are moving right along and we have episode six of our farmhouse bell today. I hope you're in a better mood this one and don't yell at the folks. I wasn't yelling. You were yelling last time. Was I? Was it me? <laughs> yeah, I'm in a better mood. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa. Today I have my husband here and we're going to talk about the next steps in our farmhouse build. Now, if you haven't caught up with all our previous videos, I will have a playlist in our description box. That way you can check all the previous videos out um, and just kind of see what has taken us up to this point. Today we're talking about the concrete, finally. God, it's been how many months? I mean, it's a... Uh... After this point, uh, I think everything is really going to start coming together and and it's really going to start looking like a house. But to this point has been a, <laughs> a challenge. Yes, it has. But we're here mm -hmm. and it's it's it looks beautiful. All right. So after we prepped all of the block walls and added all of the gravel and did all of the plumbing and electrical, it was time to prep for the concrete. So after we filled out all the gravel and um, we compacted, got it really nice, there was a couple of areas that we needed to actually dig out a few trenches for um, weight bearing walls. So they went ahead and did that, right? So it's kind of like footers. So anything that's going to hold and weight bearing, you want to dig a little bit further into it and create like a, a footer within the gravel and then run rebar so that, you know any, anything that holds significant amount of weight you know you have extra um extra support extra support <laughs> because <laughs> as many of you guys um suggested and we already had in the plans so something that we were going to do regardless is we were going to have a storm room in our house because of the weather we don't have a basement this time around and there has been some pretty crazy weather up here um so we knew that we were going to have to do a storm room anyways so so can y'all guess where we're going to put it <laughs> i think uh, we'll we'll probably let you know in the future but yes we did um wherever the load bearing walls are um we're gonna put block mm -hmm. and then encase it and then it'll be like drywalled so you can't see it so like we'll let you guys uh guess where that's gonna go so they dug those little trenches out in preparation then they added the vapor barrier right then the vapor barrier goes in and on the trenches you know the it dips in so the vapor barrier dips in and they put rebar and then they put like um uh it's like a, it almost looks like a big wire mesh the the a grid right it's like a grid and i think it's like i don't know three sixteenths or, or no it's over a quarter inch thick so it's it's just kind of like small rebar that kind of holds all the concrete in place together and they poured concrete they did so what we needed to do first is we actually needed to get the concrete on the main floor of the house poured mm -hmm. first. And I think he said it was, uh, what was it? 4,000 PSI type concrete? It was 4,000 PSI. And it also had like a, like fiber, fibers in the concrete. So to also hold it in together, plus all the rebar, that way, you know, it, it'll crack as minimally as possible. And the fact that there's no settling underneath anyway. So that really just kind of, uh, hopefully minimizes any cracks in the actual concrete i mean we did layer upon layer upon layer of trying to get this uh, slab base as solid as possible um which you know we appreciated oh and uh somebody asked in the last or a couple of videos ago uh there was a header block that looked kind of like it was cut out so it looked almost like a c you know, so this side is the exterior wall and then this side's the interior. And the reason they did that is because the cavity was open. So when they poured the concrete, it flows in and locks everything in. And then it'll just be one level piece. And so, yeah. So once that was all prepped, they were here like, I don't know, 530 in the morning, the mm -hmm. day of the concrete pour. Mm -hmm. They like to do it early in the morning before it starts getting too hot, right? So that it can cure slowly because if it cures too quickly, then that's when you get the, you know, ugly cracks and stuff. Right, right, right. So they came in with this huge machine. <laughs> what was that called? It's a, it's a boom truck and it has a motor with a huge extension arm. That way it can 
pour the concrete to the back portion of the home instead of trucks running around <laughs> everywhere on your property. Um, you know, the driveway is compacted, so like that's not going anywhere, but not the rest of the property. So if they start driving trucks, they'll sink in and get stuck. And they did get stuck Actually, at one they point. Did. We have footage. We have footage. <laughs> um, but like the, the major portion, the home and, and the garage got poured using the, the big boom. And what's interesting is, is there's this guy with this little thing over like his head and he's controlling it with a remote. He's just standing there with everybody. But yeah, the concrete came in and they got to work so fast. And it was so weird because they were like, there was like, I don't know, eight guys or something like in this small little section. Mm -hmm. And you would think that they would get in each other's way, yeah. but they were all, they all knew what each little... other was doing. It was, it was it was a sight to see. We had never seen, you know, and, and you have to work fast. That's the thing. Once this thing starts pouring, it starts drying and they have to work it. But it's amazing how, how also how long you can work the concrete. And we'll show you guys what we mean because there's so many different steps in, in layering and, and flattening and, 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 how do you say leveling it mm -hmm. and smoothing it out? I mean, it's, 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 it's really cool. And they had all these different like tools that they right. used in order yeah, to make then, it uh, flat. Um, once they start pouring, you know, that you have the, the two by four method with two guys, you know, that hold the two by four on either end. And then they just kind of like trial it in and then smooth it out. And then they got these big, almost, they look like rakes that kind of push concrete all around. And they got the little hand trials are all pushing it. And then once they get it, you know, relatively level, then they bring out this really long, um, looks like a bow float, I guess, this handheld, and it has like a little uh, motor on it, and then it starts to vibrate, and then that just like pushes everything down, and it just kind of levels it as it's going, and it just vibrates it. So then, you know, once that happens, and then they wait a little bit, and then they come back and bring in these other machines that look like big upside down fan blades. I mean, these things are pretty They're, big and they yeah. weigh a bunch. And then that guy starts going out and just starts fanning, smoothing it. And then they keep going over and over and over until they get like a polished mirror type finish where it's smooth. And that took, I don't, I don't know how many hours that took several hours for them to do because you know they go over it over it and then they pour a little bit of water smooth it smooth it and then they start off with a big one and then they get down to like a smaller one that's only two foot and then they just keep doing it over and over and over until it is smooth it's wild we had never seen that before you know and we had no idea that there were so many different like tools and and equipment well, she hasn't seen i've well, seen i've seen I'm the sorry. big ones oh he's he's just more experienced <laughs> i hadn't seen it i, I thought seen, it was interesting yeah, no, i was I, like this is fascinating what is all this what's this next machine coming out i have no idea because at first mm -hmm. when they were like leveling it out with, with the rough leveling i was kind of sweating there for a minute i'm like is this how it's gonna stay yeah. <laughs> and they just kept bringing thing after thing after thing and i was like oh okay i see it now so yeah that was really cool to watch um and yeah, so they started with the um, main house um, floor, and then they did the garage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they did both the garage and the floor in the same exact method, right? Mm -hmm. And that was all done within that first day, correct? Mm -hmm. That was a one-day thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they uh, also, before all the concrete started drying, or while it was still wet, they went around putting uh, half-inch bolts at all the perimeter. That way, when you put your, uh, your seal plate on, um, you're basically tying your wood to the concrete floors. Right. And that's not something that a lot of people do. They usually, they just. They do and don't. Some people don't. It depends, I, I, right? in it our depends area, on builder, right? Right. It depends on builder. In, in our area, you know, a lot of people have a, a crawl space. So they don't have to do that because they're putting wood on wood. Um, or they wait to drill afterwards. Um, our framers wanted to go ahead and have the bolts in. That way they just set it in, tighten it in. And any additional bolts, you know, they're going to drill in if we have to. And, you know, they also got to shoot uh, nails into the wood. So it's it's just a whole process depending on, you know, which contractors do or which people you use if you're going to build your own home. So different methods. Again, we, we opted to have the bolts up front versus doing them later. And um, because concrete dries at certain uh, stages since it was really windy and hot that day um i had to sit out there with a hose and hose it down 
the way concrete works is, you know, it, it's when it starts drying, it's like an exothermic reaction and it produces heat. And, you know, the bottom of the concrete dries slower than the top. Um, just because the top, you know, if it's a sunny day, the sun's going to beam down on it. And not only that, you have surface tension. So, like, if it is really windy and that day it was super windy, it was, it was just blowing. And so the top's going to dry way faster than the bottom. And to combat that is, you know, you spread water on it after it's all polished. Um, that way you can keep the top part colder and reduce the chances of it cracking because if it dries faster than the bottom, then you'll have a bunch of micro fractures within the concrete. So like we I was out that. there just all day long, just the minute it just dried up, I'm sitting there just spraying it down. And and once it got dark, it wasn't as bad because then the temperature drops. Um, but the fact that, you know, I was spraying water all day, it turned out great. So again, I don't, I don't know if you have to do that. We did. They recommended it. So that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. So that ended up turning out just, just beautiful and soft and just, it was so smooth. We were, we were so excited at how it looked at the end of the day, because from what it started to how it ended, I yeah. mean, that concrete, that slab looks amazing. Oh, and again, not to forget, they did do the, the stress cut release in there. That way, if it is going to crack. You know, the theory is going to crack in the, in the in the relief joints that, that were cut in. And they're like quarter inch and the grids look, and it looks really nice. So day two, they came back and it was time to do the front porch and the back porch. By this point, the, you know, main slab was nice and dry and it was all good. And this time around, it was a little bit different because they were using um, like a brush method for this, right? They, right, because like you're... You know, your home, you want it smooth. So, you know, if you don't put any flooring in, you can see the concrete. And on the front and back porch, um, it has to have a certain slope from the front of the house to the front portion. That way, if water gets on it, it runs off. And you also don't want it to be smooth because if it rains and you walk out there, it'll be slick and you'll fall and hurt yourself. So, like, they have to do a textured um, finish on it that way you have grip when you walk on it. They call it a fine broom finish. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, you know, just lines from the, you know, back of the porch to the front of it. And just, again, that way there's there's grip. And there's also stress lines as well. Which and those are different because they don't they cut those different. in. They just kind of push them in. And yeah. and you'll see they, they ended up looking really nice too. Right. So they did the front porch and then they went to the back porch and then they got those done. I think, well, obviously it was a lot less concrete. So they got those done a lot quicker mm -hmm. during the day. Yeah, not, not as many guys showed up for that one. Right, right. And so they did those and then they set those to dry. And then... And after that, then they immediately started working on the septic tank. I know. And, and we were extremely worried about that because like the, the first one we put in, we had to bust a ton of rock. Um, luckily, we had rented a big, you know, rock hammer, but we're like, we were thinking as a man... It is going to take forever. Um, but luckily, the spot we picked, like the home happened to be in the exact correct spot and where the plumbing came out of the home and where the septic tank was going to be put in was just, I mean, it just worked like out of all the headaches we've had, that turned out to be the least. I mean, the minute they started digging, they got to the right depth. And didn't have to bust rock. And we were like, oh. You couldn't believe it. God. We were like, you mean something finally went our way? I know. They busted like, <laughs> I think they used it for like 10 minutes just to like make it square. Because like, I think there was like a one little corner. It wasn't, it wasn't going to fit properly. So they just hammered it away for a little bit. But like, it got down. We still hit rock. But by the time we hit rock, we were deep enough to where the concrete or, or the septic tank could sit in and be completely fine. So that was a huge relief because like, oh now we don't have to waste like i would say we, we'd have to spend a whole week of hammering an extra additional cost to get the tank down to the level it needs to and it just fit in perfectly because those hammers are really expensive i mean you're running them by the day and sometimes they can take day because it took us several days for our camper and the and the sewer 
or yeah. the the septic tank that we have for the cottage now that we used for the camper when we first moved I mean, out here. The, that thing took several days to bust I mean, through. The size that we got, I think it was probably nine hundred or a thousand dollars a day. So if you have it a week, you're at like five thousand dollars for a piece of machine just to rent it. I right. mean, it's crazy. So we were very excited <laughs> right. at this time. It, we didn't have to worry it, about it. it. Just, we, we used <laughs> it for one day, and that was it. Right, because that was the same machine that we used to bust the rock for the electrical line mm -hmm. that we talked about in a couple of videos ago. So, yeah, those we, in, there's a lot of stuff kind of going on at the same time when the machines are here, because once the machine is here, if we need it for several different tasks, it is working, you know, on um, getting those things done as quickly as possible, even while other things are going on. So um, we were glad that we didn't have to worry about that. And then obviously the leech lines was a big deal because right. that's a you know, huge stress. That was one of, you know, that was the, ins you know, another inspection that we right. were <laughs> anticipating. And, and <laughs> if people don't know what a, a the leach or septic system works is your wastewater, all your water that comes out goes to the holding tank, which is a septic tank. And it has different chambers of where the water goes into the first, spills over to the second, and then the water goes out. On the outside, you have lines that are called leach lines that where your water it's going to dissipate through your yard and eventually just uh, filter out and drain out into, you know, your field. It's like a big old snake. Right. And then depending on the type of uh, dirt you have, the length of the lines change. Our, since we're on a mountain, we had 500 feet of leech lines. And not only that, we had to have a modified uh, set of leech lines, which what that means is that they could only dig down a certain depth before they hit a uh, rock, which is about 18 inches. And then they have to l put a layer of gravel. And then on top of that layer of gravel, then they have to put in the, the corrugated pipe, you know, the black pipe that has holes all in it. And then on top of that, then you have to have a certain level of gravel on top. And then you add a filter mesh to kind of keep the dirt from going in. And then you put the dirt. But while you're digging the dirt, you also have to, now this is a, another part, a weird thing is you have to bring in extra topsoil. So when you're digging, you're mixing new dirt with your old dirt. And, and, and it was just a huge thing. Um, and again, that's only because, you know, we only have like 24 to uh, 18 inches of, of dirt before you hit solid rock, except for where we had our tank. That was a miracle there. Yeah, it really um, was. So it wasn't that big a deal as far as digging it out. It's just... The requirement of where we live is, you know, they had to do that whole crazy modified plus 500 feet, which is like a huge, like I think it was five different runs on our property to get to 500 feet. Luckily, when the inspector came, I mean, he was out here for a while, so they were sweating a little bit. Yeah. So he shows up <laughs> and this guy is a beast. I mean, I'm not a little guy, you know, six foot, 240. You know, and this guy made me look small. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Baby, Baby woke up. <laughs> so the inspector was a beast. Um, <laughs> you see her hand? So imagine her hand and me shaking it. You're so That was a comparison. Like, so it was my hand was like the baby's <laughs> hand. And the dude shaking mine was like mine shaking the baby. <laughs> this guy was a big dude. And as soon as he stepped out the car... I'm sitting here just messing with because, again, it's a very uh, rigorous process because they, they got to make sure everything works out properly because, you know, it, it's it's an environmental thing that we're doing. You're putting wastewater into your yard. But, you know, as soon as he steps out, I'm sitting there talking to the contractors like, I told you he's a little guy. And because, and you know, I wanted the guy to laugh because I didn't want him to start off, you know, being in a bad mood because, like, when he showed up the first time on our first septic tank, he was not happy. But yeah, no, he was. Um... He was out here for a while, so they were sweating it for was like a while. An hour and a half. Yeah. I mean, he was walking it down. He had a probe, probing everything. He was tape measure, measuring everything. He had a uh, the laser level that you know that spins and beeps, and he was just going around checking everything. He was questioning at us. What did he was you like do? quizzing you guys. Yeah, he, what he did y'all do? What are you doing? This and the other. And then you know, and then again, he got he. Didn't even smile the whole time. And then finally he's like, all right, 
looks great. And then he goes on and starts talking to Contra. He's like, oh, man, we love the fact that you do such good work. But, like, you wouldn't have thought it was good work because he had, like, a straight poker face and looked mean. So, <laughs> but luckily, it got passed, and then we could just cover it all up. Now our whole yard, you know, which was green, is now just a big dirt pile. So, right. So we got to be careful for any new contractors to come in. It's like, hey, drive on grass. If there is no grass, do not drive on that. Because obviously right now the dirt is really soft and still hasn't compacted with the rain and stuff. So like, you know, A, you could crush the line. B, you'll get stuck, period. Right. So oh, at least we did not feel that one. We passed it. So we were very excited about that. And then as soon as they got done with that, they jumped over to finish trenching the power so we had the the we had the the conduit from the power pole all the way to the box the only thing that was missing is from that transformer box to the actual home mm -hmm. um, and the reason we didn't do that is because that was going to go under the driveway and then you know, we, and we wanted, needed to have the, the, con right, the those concrete trucks. Right, we yeah. needed the concrete trucks and, and, and anything else to go under and drive through them. So we didn't want any huge equipment potentially crushing it. Right. So they came in, opened it all up. We ran our pipe. You know, we were well, I think we were, we had brought in so much dirt. We were like four feet under the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, and the requirement was like, you know, less than that. So it was, you know, we were well under that. So. We got that in. Now that that's done, everything under or all the underground work is done except for the the well water, um, which we're gonna have a truck come out. They drill, you know, a huge hole into the ground to the, get to the natural aquifers, and then we're gonna have well water to our home. We're not gonna run off our city water. That's the only thing that's left that's you know remaining when it comes to underground work. But everything directly around the house um, is complete. And of course, once everything is completed and done and we're at the drywall stage, all that will get nice and cleaned up and looking a lot better. It's just going to look a little bit rough for a little bit yeah. while longer. <laughs> oh, and I almost forgot like uh, the pipe from the transformer going to the home. Um, I also ran pipe out of the house and into the field and capped it off for in the future if I wanted to run um, any additional uh, electrical so like if i want to put like a uh a barn or something small you know i already have the pipe underneath the driveway and then we're gonna have to dig anything up and you know in the event that we decide to uh put concrete all the way down our driveway you have chases to go down so again that's just preparing for the future well even if we never use it we'll always have it i guess now it's time for the b-roll Here comes our first truckload for our slab. All the guys are here. You got the machines over there that look like upside down fan blades. So after the concrete is poured, they'll get after it. From begin.
So as y'all can see, we got our interior slab poured. That's the concrete truck for our front porch. And back porch. Well, I don't think that line looks straight. That is the outlet for the wastewater. Right here is where the tank's gonna go. And if y'all remember, this is a high side, so that means rock's gonna be barely under this dirt. So we have the big hammer over there, plus that excavator. And we got the gentleman with a shovel. So between those three things, we are gonna get this septic tank in, hopefully. But I think the shovel is really going to do most of the work. So they started digging and they actually got far enough without hitting rock, which is amazing because that footer right there is sitting on rock. So it must have just had like a huge vein that goes through here. And then here it just it got down to four feet. They just got to make it a little bit wider, but it's awesome. That makes it a whole lot easier.
So we got the septic tank in, the leach lines, 500 feet of lines, waiting for the uh, state inspector to come out, look at them. And while they're doing that, they're cleaning up the site and they're also running my electrical pipe from where the transformer sits over to the house. And then they'll spread all this gravel around and they'll pretty much be done with their end. And then the next uh, set of contractors come in and start framing the home. So things are finally starting to move. All right, so here's the utility box. So you have one pipe that goes out there, and then you have these two that go out there as well. So their equipment goes, all the underground is done. The guys are paid. They're off to the next job and we're off to the next phase of the construction. So now is the top out phase where we got to get framing and then the rest of the other trades, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, insulation, drywall, painters. So. Here we go. Well, that is it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give us a thumbs up and let us know what you guys are thinking about the series so far and everything that's taken place. And um, yeah, we will see you back here very soon. We have a lot more work underway that we can't wait to share with you all. So until then, go down. Adios.